I want to make a deal with you this morning. Can we never ever talk about Mitsubishi and Dakar in the same sentence again? Because those days are, are way over. I mean, that was when Dakar was still raced in Africa, not in South America. And Mitsubishi, unfortunately, has been resting on their laurel, so to speak, for far too long. It's time for them in South Africa to rebuild their brand. And the way they're going to do that is with exciting new product. The ASX is exactly the right direction Mitsubishi needs to take. The Mitsubishi Outlander paved the way for the ASX, but it was more akin to bundu bashing wagons like the Subaru Forester than the current crop of mini SUVs. Interestingly, the ASX borrows styling cues from its sedan stablemates rather than the SUVs, clearly indicating the company's shift in focus. So obviously the SUV market is a massive one in South Africa and we've seen so many manufacturers coming to play in this arena. More recently, for example, Jeep Compass with what they've done going two-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive. Mitsubishi's gone the same route with the ASX and they've kept it simple. I think that's important that you're not confusing consumers with massive choice. One engine only at the moment, two liter petrol engine is what it is, 110 kilowatts, 197 newton meters of torque, super simple. Comes in a five speed manual or they've gone with a CVT option. Now we're driving CVT at the moment and people always whinge and moan about CVT boxes, people hate them. When I say people, I mean journos. But uh, I must admit it's one of the better CVT boxes we've driven, quite similar to the Suzuki Kizaji actually. Very, very quiet. Obviously, it's going to be a bit more annoying when you're driving around in town, but for us cruising on the open road, it's not a loud box, it's not whining in your ear. It seems to actually get along quite nicely doing what it needs to do. There are two specification levels you can choose from as well. We're obviously in the higher spec vehicle at the moment because it comes standard with the leather seats, but it's pricing that is always going to be an important selling point with SUVs. And they've done well by keeping it under the 300,000 mark. Starts at 279, and the top of the range of CVT like we in now is 319. Thousand rand, so priced particularly well and sitting slap bang in the middle of, uh, of all the big dogs and competitors. In terms of the drive, for me, pretty comfortable. The seats kind of do feel a bit bench like, so I think for the bigger guys out there, you're going to have no problem slipping into the ASX and, and getting a comfortable driving position. It's quite deceptive when you do look at it from the outside, though, because from a styling point of view, for me, it doesn't look SUV, it actually looks very sedan like. It's got a super aggressive front end, which I don't think everybody's going to like, but for me that really appeals to my sense of a car that's purposeful and is going to have a presence on the road. And then when you get inside of it, the only way you know that it's, <laughs> it's not a standard sedan is it does have that slightly elevated driving position. You do sit a bit more upright, which is exactly why these cars are popular. It gives you that commanding drive position. The car comes standard with everything you can expect. Seat heaters are in the, in the higher spec model. Another thing I really enjoy with the ASX is they've also continued to just keep things pretty simple on the interior side as well. Everything is well laid out, there's nothing too fancy, nothing too busy about it. Uh, entertainment system is a little bit old school for me, they have done a, a deal with Rockford Fosgate, so it's quite funny because you've got this, this pretty cool mom's taxi that looks good, but it's got this quirkiness because it's got a big Rockford Fosgate subwoofer in the back. They've even got LED running lights when you open up the sunroof, so a bit of quirkiness added into it. Obviously it does come with uh, your auxiliary jacks, it comes with USB chargers, and most of those things as you'd find in, in probably a lot of the cars, they always put in the center armrest. They've done the same with ASX, but they've done something I haven't seen on other cars before. They've actually left it all channel, so you can run the cords out, so your equipment isn't stuck away in the, in the center or storage bin, so very, very clever. It comes with a full spare, which is nice as well when you're driving on, on our roads in South Africa, and again, fantastic dealer network, so you're not going to have a problem getting your car looked after and serviced. Service intervals every 15,000 kilometers, and they do come with a three-year 100,000 kilometer warranty and a five-year 90,000 kilometer service plan. There's never been a problem for me with Mitsubishi in terms of its product, but obviously they're now no longer linked to Mercedes-Benz. So it's tough times ahead, but the way to conquer those tough times is to bring out fantastic products. Thumbs up for me from the ASX, fantastic car to drive, really pleasant, does everything right, and it's well priced. So they've got the brand name, they've got the dealer network, and now it looks like they've finally got the product. It's exciting times, I think, for Mitsubishi South Africa. They've promised that ASX is just the beginning of it all. It will get a lot of exciting new product coming to SA next year. It looks good. It's an SUV, which is extremely popular in South Africa, and it's well-priced. So they really are appealing to all of consumers' needs out there. I'm happy to tell you, I think Mitsubishi is back.